Look there on the trenches with Thresh. Cannot defend her. I cannot believe. It's Let gotta be the game. I can Let it see. It's a slugfest. Double kill. Triple kill. Double kill. Quadra kill. Double kill. Double kill. Triple kill. My god, that was amazing. Hooks on. Big Swift has gone mega, but they killed us support. Can't connect the chain. And Destiny. Hook is on. Swift is dead. dead. Ray locked down. Ray's. Trippies gets that kill. And Spoos is stuck between the entire wall pack. Double kill for Vantix. They're running towards the Nexus. Hello and welcome to the OPL week nine, day number one, of course, brought to you by Hungry Jacks. It is the final week of regular season and we're about to kick off with Legacy taking on the Bombers in the AFL match. Hello, everyone. My name is Jake Sport Tiberi. And joining me is the one lung wonder, <laughs> Bryce E.G. <laughs> Paul. Is it the none lung wonder now? Well, what well, happened? Apparently, yeah, I had a bit of a hiccup, but uh, this week I should be fine. Hopefully, hopefully nothing goes wrong and I'll be here with you. For all of the games, mate. I won't ditch you for Carbon Wendelli anymore. Yeah, I, I missed you, mate. Uh, I, 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 I hope you're feeling good. But if you do have any strays, just let me know <laughs> and I'll take over because I don't want to happen. We'll let team speak together when it happened. I, yeah, just, just, I freaked out. I didn't know what to do. It just went kaboom. Yeah. It was, we were just having a chat. We were talking about some League of Legends. Then it's like, see you later. But it Off is better hospital. now. So he's all good, mm -hmm. uh, ready to join us for an action-packed final week of the OPL as we take a look at the schedule and the games that we have for you. It's going to be Legacy kicking us off against the Bombers before Direwolves take to Summoner's Rift against Avant Gaming tomorrow at 2 p.m. And what is a much see the Chiefs Esports Club will try and retain their top spot against the boys from Order Melbourne. And then Tectonic take on Sin Gaming. First time we've seen the bottom of the table clash. Mm, yeah. I'm interested to see how it goes. And of course, right now, every seed is still up for grabs uh -huh. in the OPL. As we take a look at the ladder, the top five teams are playing on the gauntlet. We do finals a little bit differently. Fifth plays fourth next Friday. Winner plays uh, third, winner plays second, then the top seeded team goes straight to the grand final. Right now, that is the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. They're 24 points. Direwolves in order can still grab that slot. Avant and Legacy will be playing next Friday at 5 p.m. Bombers, Sim Gaming, and Tectonic can all move up and down. And of course, there are points towards relegation at the end of split two. Egypt, give me the lowdown on how this works. So, Direwolves on 24 points right now, but they are, sorry, they're on 23, and Chiefs are on 24, and they need to bridge the gap, but they have the head to head. So, they need to get at least one point more than Chiefs this week so they can match points overall. Chiefs, in the same vein, they want to keep that lead, right? So, they need one more point than the Direwolves this week. Order. They need to get the 2 0, and then rely on Direwolves dropping every single game to Avant. That's a, it's going to be difficult for it's them. It's a long shot. It's, a, it's possible. It's, it's a possible. hope and a prayer. Yep, absolutely there. And then AV Legacy fighting for the uh, fourth and fifth placements there. AV are ahead by one point now, so they just want to keep that gap over there. They need to get one more point than Legacy, and obviously in Legacy shoot, they need to bridge that gap and get once over because AV have the head-to-head. -head. And ladder math sucks. Yep. However, what we're trying to tell you is that every game mm -hmm. matters right now. It the does. teams just need to keep winning and hope that a couple of other teams lose to end up where they were. Unless, of course, you were the Chiefs yeah. Esports Club, completely rebuilt roster, mm -hmm. and still have a crack at first They place. have the destinies in their own hands. They're the only team that can actually pull it out for themselves. Because if they 2-0, they get all three points, and they're sitting at the top, and uh, Destiny's going to be pretty happy with that one. Yeah, we'll see how it does work out. However, to hear more about this weekend's games, let's throw it over to Laura, and quite possibly the best, most handsome-looking <laughs> coach okay. in all of the OPL, <laughs> all right. Aaron Choo Choo's Blair. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. What a compliment to kick off. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> uh, today I am joined by Aaron Chuchu's Blend. Once again, welcome back. It's Thanks great to have you for uh, what's going to be a pretty action-packed day. Yeah, last week of the OPL. I'm stoked. But Hopefully AV win for me. <laughs> yeah, while I've got you here, I need to ask you, what's going on with order at the moment? Because you guys seem to perfect game the top oh, teams and then drop the geez. series. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had a rough couple last two weeks against Legacy and Direwolves. But um, we had good promising games, our uh, first games in both of those series. So I, uh, I, I've been looking at that, like gr holding on to that. And then the other two games we've obviously been reviewing, trying to improve and 
Um, I think by Gauntlet, we'll, we'll put up a good fight. Well, I think your match tomorrow against the Chiefs is going to be one to watch out for. But our first match of today will be Legacy going up against the Bombers. And I think that these are the two teams out of the entire league that have had the greatest improvement throughout the split. Uh, Legacy have been accelerating these past few weeks. And that man on your screen right now, Sybil, popped off on Karzik's last week, uh, unfortunately against you, Choo Choo's. Yep. But with you going up against Legacy so recently, uh, what are your thoughts on them as a team at the moment? Um, uh, so... You said Legacy improving a lot. I think, oh, I can't say no because they beat me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually think that they haven't improved as fast as every other, like as as other teams. I think Bombers uh, have shown significant improvement. Um, then again, they had a lot more room to grow because they were coming last. But Legacy uh, really needs to heading into Gauntlet next week. Need to really start closing out games quite. Um, firmly, uh, especially against uh, the side of Bombers, which are uh, a rising team. This is a good example, um, a good demonstration of how they will see going into the gaunt going into the gauntlet. Yeah, well, on the other side of the field, we do have the Bombers, and I think in particular, Sleeping and Rosie have been performing uh, very well. And yeah. I think Rosie, even though he's a veteran in the scene, has probably improved the most out of any player. That might be a bit of a big. Uh, Thing to say, but that's just my thoughts. Um, but what do you think Bombers have to do to take this series today? I am I'm looking at that guy right there. I think Rosie has been, may, he, may, he may have been the most improved player of the split. I mean, all of OPL, his Alistair performance is a stellar. Um, sleeping as well has been, well, he came into this region from Europe as a, as like a, like a guy who can like split push really well, like quite a good mechanical player, similar to what Flares was like when he came over from North America. But we never really saw um, like any of that mechanical presence that he brought to Bombers really stands out in the first couple of weeks. But it has started to show in the final two weeks. Even though they got 2 0 by Chiefs last week, I think he, um, he solo killed Swiper or he did pretty well. So um, going against Mimic, this is going to be a good top lane matchup. With all of that in mind, Choo Choo's, who are you going to give this series to? I will probably give it to Legacy 2 1. I'm going to give it Legacy 2-1 too. I think Bombers have what it takes to be able to take a game today. But remember, if you would like to make your own predictions at home, head on over to opltips.com.au where we have those $25, $50 and $100 Hungry Jacks vouchers available as well as XP boosts and RP prizes. For more information on the competition and how you can enter, make sure you head on over to opltips.com.au. And if you're an aspiring coach or maybe you just want to know about Patch 8.5, make sure you send your questions over to us on Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag like no other. Choo Choo's will be answering your questions uh, throughout the day after the games. And as always, if your question is answered, you'll win yourself a mystery skin. Choo Choo's, thank you very much for your thoughts no on this series. But to get it underway, let's hand it back to Jake and Bryce. Thanks so much. Always good to hear from Or and the guests in Choo's. Uh, <laughs> interesting game here because it is a precursor. Bryce, I don't know if you know this. Two next Fridays, yeah, blockbuster okay. clash of Essendon Football Club taking on the, the Adelaide, Adelaide Crows. Crows. Yeah. Uh, who are you tipping in that game? I'm not a big AFL guy, so like, I don't know. He's from Canberra. <laughs> there is no football in Canberra. <laughs> there you go. I played cricket. Did you really? Yeah, I played cricket. What I was pretty you? good. I was Bowler. a bowler. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm like tall. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah, slingshot action there. I was, a, I was a pace guy. You know, none of that, none of that spill, spin crap. Just a... Uh, just as fast as possible. See, I am an Essendon Football Club supporter. Oh, okay. So I'm hoping we have a very Who is good... Who the better team currently? The Adelaide Crows uh, or the Essendon Football it, Club? Historically, for the last couple of years, Adelaide have been much better than us. Okay. However, we've got an up-and-coming roster, which oh, I'm very okay. happy about. <laughs> uh, however, let's get into this game. Mm -hmm. I want to start with your man, the passive laner yep. uh, in Rosie. Mm -hmm. Because lately... He has certainly seemed to sway more towards the spawn school of thought yeah. of being an aggressive support guy. And that's the thing, because I feel like a lot of people have kind of labelled him as this passive player. And just to echo the sentiments of Lauren Chukas, I think he's been stepping up massively. The Bombers... I think he's undisputably the most improved player, by the way. Like, I'd have to give it some thought. I actually haven't thought about, like, you know what I mean? Like, who yeah. else? But, like, he's definitely a contender. But Bombers, the biggest criticism early in the split was the fact that they just weren't doing anything. Yep. They were playing passively. They weren't actually trying to win a game. They were just slowly bleeding. And then Rosie was the guy to step it up. He's got his mojo back. Out of the last three series, they've only won four games, and three of them were on the back of Rosie's Alistar. So he's been popping off, been playing super well, and I feel like it's uh, great for someone. Laura mentioned he's a veteran. He's been around for a very long time, but really hasn't been the biggest player since he was on the Chiefs. He's been floated from team to team, and now that he's on the Bombers, and later in the season, he's really stepped up. Yeah, exactly right. And Bombers are a team that have gotten better. It's mm -hmm. not like that meme where we're saying they're gradually improving. Yep. They've picked up four of their seven points, four of their six points, in the mm -hmm. last three weeks. So yep. they have started to really put the gas on the accelerator. So I want to ask you, as the Bombers, is their job done? Can they now like take whatever the result of this is and say, you know what, 
if our start of our split had been better, we would be a top five contender? Or do you think that they still need to win this game to be happy with their season? Oh, so I mean... You come into the studio as a player and you just want to win, right? Yep. Like, they, they definitely want to... They can't really bridge the gap to five this season, obviously, but they definitely want to keep it up over Sin. They don't want to finish seventh or eighth or anything like that. So they need to be able to perform against Legacy today. And I think it's just like a confidence thing. They had, for the first two weeks, they didn't have a main, full roster. Choo Choo's was playing for them. And then they had two yep. imports that didn't really get, like, assimilated into the team for a couple of weeks. So they've had, like, less time as a full roster than some of the teams. But uh, as they have had that time, they have been ramping up. But I feel like... Relegation is only really a thing in Split 2. Split 1 doesn't matter, but the points do. So they really need to like try and build confidence for next Split. Yeah, certainly is the case. Let's get into the lineups before we hit on Legacy 2 heavily. It's going to be Legacy starting on the blue side. Mimic is their top laner. Sybil is their jungler. Claire is their superstar. Melbournian mid laner. Raids and also Melbournian. AD you just Harry. love the Melbournians. Just, yeah, they just pointed them all out <laughs> last week. Deco, of course, is their support. Lucio, big bang, soul strikes. Mm -hmm. Is their coach going up against the Bombers. Sleeping is their top laner. Seb, their jungler. Luch. Their mid laner Tiger and their captain Rosie round out their lineup with Windows Monkey as their coach. And it's actually Sybil that I want to go to next mm -hmm. because, as far as improved players in a short burst, yep. Sybil, when he picked up the Elise, kind of hit a switch. Mm -hmm. And then he went to the Kazakhs the next week, absolutely tore apart my order lineup. Yeah, he did. And I think this he is really a player did. that people sleep on every single season mm -hmm. because he gets patched out. He's not a patch resilient player, in yep. my opinion, but when it is his meta. He plays a very good League of Legends, and he showed that last week. And that's the thing. I feel like patch 8.5, of course, we're going from 8.4 last week to 8.5 this week. Uh, could be beneficial because we have the Warmogs nerfs, the Cinder nerfs, the tanks. That uh, Sybil has been playing, like they said, Juani's been less effective than on the Elise on the Kha'Zix. So maybe this patch is kind of patching him in, as you say, and uh, feel a lot more comfortable. And I think like, that was a big confidence booster for him, for a player that I think is largely a confidence player. Uh, especially he's bounced from roster roster to roster, and yep. I feel like last week, especially against a, such a top team like Order, would have been a big deal for him. Absolutely. So if you are Legacy, what is your goal for this game? You are locked. You're going to be playing next Friday versus Avant Gaming. Mm -hmm. Side selection is up to grabs, which is nice, but not necessary. Yep. What is your goal for this game? They need to play clean, and they need to they need to prove that they can 2-0 Bombers, and that they can also do it convincingly. Okay. You look at Diawals, they're a pretty clinical team, and they're slower than Chiefs and Order, but out of the top three teams, Chiefs and Order, if they get a lead, that will end the game, especially Chiefs. They just blow up in games, yeah. and Legacy, when they get to the mid to late stage, we've seen that they falter time and time again. Both Chiefs and Order are yet to lose a game when they have a lead at 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. They just win all their games when they're ahead at 15 minutes. They are... Kind of the bullies, yep. the pub stompers the of pub the stompers. league, if you want. However, we are into champion Ooh. select. It's going to be Legacy taking on the Bombers. Olaf, as well as Camille and Alistar, banned away. Gangplank, as well as Kha'Zix and Nah hit the bench. So a lot thrown towards that top side of the mm. map for both teams. And Volley Bear is up and available. <laughs> and it was banned both games last week against both Sleeping and Seb. Apparently, they play it a lot. You're yeah. laughing. But it is going to be a Predator Jungler. Skarner is the other one left up on the table, which should not be overlooked. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see it. Maybe we won't. We will find out. But Alistar, we talked about Rosie's Alistar. I feel like Legacy, very good ban. Makes so much sense. Zyra they, Khan. They left that one open. Would be a bit of a wild card. Zyra Khan have a 68% win rate. Yeah, sorry. In the OPL. Sorry. I, I think my team is responsible for two of the losses. <laughs> yeah, so well, uh, apologies. Yeah, you ruined it. You ruined it for everyone, but... No, it would be interesting if they do pick that one up, or if they just lock in the Zyre and something else. Chiefs have been the only team willing to pick away the Rakan without the Zyre. They played it with Callista last weekend, but no, Bomber's not going to give Legacy the chance. Just going to lock in the Lovers duo. This makes so much sense to me, yep. because we've seen that the Bombers, when Rosie is not engaged, just look much more comfortable. Yep. And I think that this is, like, we talk about Leona, he can play that, Alistar, but I think Rakan is still, if you have Zyre, the best engaged support in the game. Thoughts? Yep, absolutely. He is. If you have a Zyre, Rakan is the best engage. You can just flash ulti W. You can close a whole screen worth of distance. And it's almost, it's just so reliable. It's undodgeable. Yep. Even if he has flash, there's like a microsecond for you to be able to react to that one. It's just so hard. So. They're also one of the best spellbook users yep. in the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. So I would not be surprised to see Rosie go something Ignite Exhausty down there. Tom Kench makes mm -hmm. it a little bit more difficult. It uh, does. As it's locked in. Skarner time catch. This is a very strong core from Legacy. Two globals mm -hmm. already locked in. This is a team that can get somewhere quickly. Mm -hmm. Also, the time catch takeaway. Of course, Rakama's already picked up, but very good into the Skarner, so not going to leave anything like that open. Small point. Did you know Windows Monkey wears an Essendon tie? I watched that. I was, I I was, I was watching from the sidelines. They're and real I never protective noticed. over those ties as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you were a long-time Essendon supporter. I you am. don't even have one. I don't have one. Oh. I have lots of beanies, scarves. 
That's I feel hard. like this is going to be a Caitlyn Varys ban, by the way, just because I want to get some mm -hmm. predictions on. Raid played a very good Varys last week. I don't mm -hmm. see teams giving it to him again. Mm -hmm. There it is, the tie. Has he done a double Windsor? Yes. No, it's a half Windsor. Yeah, it's it's falling out, mate. He's got the St. Paddy's uh, like on there as well. I like that one. Yeah, that's cool. I wonder if uh, Seb's going to go for the green Zach skin. If he doesn't, I'm calling him out immediately. That is a mistake. On this day, on and on only this day, can you get away with the base Zach skin. But... Cassio will be the ban, answering to Rise. Good matchup there, so it makes sense to take it away from Luch. Yeah, I want to see what Luch actually plays, because Luch is a player that I put under the microscope. Just because I valued Luch incredibly highly about a year ago. Yep. Uh, and then he kind of has been consistently a laning mid laner, but not yep. in the sense that, like, Fantix was a laning mid laner. Like, Fantix would pressure you. Mm -hmm. Luch is just the best laner in the sense that he will go 0-0-0 and have more CS than He's you. a vacuum. And therefore, should do more damage mm -hmm. with his more items. Yep. But it doesn't necessarily work out that way all the time. I mean, of course, if you don't have that advantage, then obviously the other team will. And then from behind, it's very hard to make things happen. I feel like I called him a vacuum. Luch kind of just sucks up all the resources, and it's kind of a 50-50 if he can use it effectively. Yep. He's a very selfish laner. I feel like Seb is one of the junglers uh, that plays around his mid lane the least and doesn't get a lot of help from the mid laner in Luch. Like, he doesn't float into the jungle too much. In saying that, he has locked in a champion that is very reliant on their team mm -hmm. in the Talia. Also yep. got a global ulti there, so yeah. matches up well against Ryze. Yep, trying to match up there, but... Ooh! Will just be the Ezreal. Varus is still available. They didn't ban the Caitlyn Varus. They went for the Tristana, which has been nerfed on this patch, but... And I feel like Raid's spider sense was tingling. He's like, why didn't they ban Varus? Why did they get rid of the champion with very long range and a net, and another champion with a buffer jump? Mm -hmm. Maybe... Just maybe, I'm about to have the absolute heck camped out well, of me. They've already got a Rakan, they've already got a Zac, they've got so much They've engaged. got a Talia. Yep. That's four champions that get into the bottom lane very quickly, and two yep. of them start there. He wants the dash. So he's like, give me the blink, yep. get me out of there. And it's actually going to be Mimic picking up Poppy. Is this the first time we've seen Poppy? No, in the we've OPL? seen Chippies play Poppy last ah, week true. as well. Yeah. Played it well. Yeah, he did play it well. He kind of traded his life in a few dives, I feel like didn't need to ah, time true, and time actually, again. Yeah. But I feel like like applied so much pressure and then kind of misexecuted on the dives, I the think. The thing but about Chippies is, like, his tank play used to be so bad. Mm -hmm. He was a great carry player. Yep. So I'm not taking anything away from Chippies. It's just that you knew he couldn't play tanks. Mm -hmm. So when he does, like, good on a tank, I get real happy. Yeah. Because it shows, like, versatility in him. Well, absolutely. And he is a better tank player now, but... Mm -hmm. They Maybe worked on it so, so many times last year. They were like picking tank compositions, even yeah. though it's like not their forte because yep. they wanted to work on it. For sure. Because they felt they were comfortable picking carry. So if Chippies gets himself a carry versus carry matchup. Makes a lot of sense. But of course, he's not playing in this game. The Scion was picked up. But I was going to say, Poppy. the likeliness is there because Mimic came over. And I, all I heard about him was ban Gangplank, ban Camille. Yep. He's going to play Nara every game. Absolute monster. No Camille ban. In this game, oh, it was actually, it was banned by Legacy, mm -hmm. so erase that point. But, I mean, things like Fiora, he's played already. Things like Jax, up and available, but he goes towards a Poppy. Mm -hmm. And I feel there is a similarity there. Potentially trying to fit a triangle peg into a square hole. Mm. And it's going to be interesting, the top lane matchup for this game specifically, because Bombers have shown that they can play through sleeping, and that can be successful. But I think it's most important, not for the Bombers to get a lead through sleeping, but for him to hold his own against Mimic. Because Legacy, they look real rough when Mimic is behind. Because yeah. he's very good at noticing opportunities and then like making his team take them. When he's on tanks, he's constantly roaming mid, getting advantages for Claire and things like that, setting up dives. So if he's able to hold his own against Mimic and potentially put him behind, it's not about his advantage, it's about Mimic's disadvantage. And we talk about how teams play, and I'll use a couple of international examples. Like KT is a team that isolate lanes. Mm -hmm. Other teams like Kingzone go towards their mid laner in BDD. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just so many different ways you can play League of Legends. I think Legacy has shown that when Mimic is getting his lead and taking it mid lane, allowing Claire to go somewhere else, that they have been the most successful. And Poppy is a champion that does that terrifically. As we are onto Summoners Rift, the game number one, final week. Last time we will see these teams before the gauntlet. It is Legacy against Bombers, and Laura is standing alongside with Soul Strikes, coach of Legacy. Thank you very much, guys. I am here with Soul Strikes. Now, Legacy have made such a comeback over the past few weeks. What's been happening or what's changed behind the scenes? Um, so there are still things uh, we need to work on. Uh, we're going to be playing on Friday next week, uh, starting fourth against AV. So we have a long way to climb to finals. So we need to work really hard and uh, hopefully make a miracle run. And since we are at the end of the split, I wanted to ask you, as a coach, how have you found it bringing four new players on board and working with them throughout the split? 
Um, so it was like a new start again, so new players, and uh, it's end of the split, so uh, we're going to go over like the ho uh, review of a ho whole split, and hopefully uh, these uh, the four guys um, take anything they learned from me, and hopefully they really show up in the gauntlet and show that uh, how I've been teaching them. Well, uh, thank you so much for talking to us, Soul Strikes, and best of luck for this game today against the Bombers. All right, thank you. Always nice to hear from Soul Strikes. A little bit of cheeky confidence yeah. in there. We'll be finishing fourth and going into that uh, gauntlet. A sleeping a mimic, kind of butt heads. Both Do of them have bone plating. Do you reckon he meant like the fourth game? Nah. From the goal? He was just I like, no, we're finishing fourth. Yeah, he was like, like we've got this one. Yeah. There's no way they're beating Dire Wolves. Yeah, he's confident. Yeah. Confident in the wolf pack? That's what Soul Strikes was thinking, by the way, not me. I, I am a big Avant fan this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As uh, Luke's just looking yeah. to push in. Uh, misses a CS there. That's very uncharacteristic. But actually mm -hmm. misses two. Mm. Easy. That's rough. Only seen it on eight on the first two waves there. But interesting so far, Rosie has been the biggest proponent, I think, of the Exhaust Ignite on the Rakan, but he's actually opted in for the Flash, potentially because of the Time Kench pick by Decoy. You don't want to all in too early because he just does negate so much of that damage, so he wants to have the extra utility of the Flash to uh, set things up later. Also, something that people miss a lot when you're playing against a Time Kench is he does more damage than you. Yeah, he does. Uh, he eats you, and then you die, generally, uh -huh. if you don't have a way to get out. Uh -huh. So if Rosie was to battle dance his way in, uh, would be a little bit dangerous. But that's kind of the strength of the Zaya pick, that it means Rakan can go so far forward and then so far back yeah. with the E. You can kind of uh, bridge that gap just so easily. So, See if we see that one come into fruition here, but Mimic slowly building himself a lead, does have the priority in the top side already. Sleeping's actually pretty low, and Sybil is ending up on the top side of the map as well. Seb is on the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. See whether they go towards one of those tower dives. Poppy does it very well. Yeah. Uh, evolution in the Poppy play has been no more airy, a lot more grasp of mm -hmm. the Undying as uh, Sleeping gets banged into a wall. Yeah, he's incredibly uh, low. However, he's going to return the damage here and maybe Mimic is oh. too low. That was a very nice grasp proc. That one extra auto attack mm -hmm. maybe just secured a kill here. But even trading damage there is just good for Legacy because Sybil, as we mentioned, is already up here. They're going to look for the dive. Do they pull the trigger? Sleeping has flash. I feel like this is such a risky dive. Straight away they go in. They're able to pick it up. They do Get the flash out of Mimic. Yep. However, sleeping here, gonna go for uh, a punch what? on it. Gets him! What the heck? What is he doing? What is, like, what? That's the second time we've seen <laughs> that, that is, I feel. That is garbage. Mimic, he had the kill. That was the easiest time of their life. Sybil was tanking the turret. And Didn't now even he's have teleported to burn flash. back. Look at the Wayne. It's in such a good position. Oh my. That is a now oh. a good play for sleeping. Congratulations, you just won your lane. That is. Disappointing. That's crap. What was that? Mimic. Big fumble there, had the lead in his hands, dropped the ball in this uh, electronic match of AFL here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, man, I tried. You really did, and <laughs> I'm really appreciating it right now. Uh, all right, cool, as we check in with the rest of the Summoner's Rift, everywhere's dead even. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see Seb looking for a cheeky counter juggle right mm -hmm. now as uh, Luch will be pushing back in. Big thing though, Claire didn't actually get his tier on his first base here. Ooh, got forced out of lane, teleported back with the double Sapphire Crystal. How did he get forced out of lane? We didn't see that. I mean, he was just getting shoved in by Luch. Early lane was uh, falling a bit down in CS, was getting pretty low. Has the spell book, so his TP and uh, Flash will be on a slightly yeah, less cooldown, but... Is it tier plus... Is, how much is a Fairy Charm? Is it 75? Or it's one? 125. Yeah, so that's 475. Which means weird. he did have enough. That's a weird build. Isn't uh, tier just 450? I think so. I mean, isn't it? Isn't it tier like seven, 750 total? Yeah. So 400. Yeah. So we had enough. He just decided not to buy. Okay. Maybe a misclick. Maybe. As he was teleporting. Yeah. I do that all the time. Maybe there's currently there's this really annoying bug. I mean, I'm not gonna like call it like the fact that it was a bug now, but where you open the shop and then you close it and then it reset like rebuys the I item. I knew exactly where this oh. was going when I started. And it's so it's so frustrating when you're walking out of base, but it's especially frustrating for solo laners with TP. Obviously, we don't know if it happened here. Probably not, but. If you're channeling the TP and then it rebuys the item and you just don't have enough time to buy it again. Yeah. But that's going to be rough for Claire. Doesn't get that early tier pick up, whereas uh, Luch has on the Talia, obviously opting in for the Archangel. She's going to be uh, pretty far behind, honestly. And this is really interesting because uh, there's a young Korean player. Uh, actually, let's not talk about that because we're going to see a dive bottom lane potentially. No, they back away. Very nice, mm -hmm. respectful play from Legacy. His name's Yukal, uh, plays for the KT uh, squad. Uh, he was a person that brought Tear into kind of Vogue on Talia. He's a mm -hmm. big Talia player in solo queue. We used to see pretty much 
100% Ludens on the champion to help out the wave clear. Yep. And he was like, nah, just get the 750 shop. It's so much easier to secure. Tier is still a good item. You're a spammy 80 carry. Stops you from going oom, and potentially now the dive will come in. They go over the wall. They don't see the them. Rosie just walks up. They're going on Already Tom. ignited, but Tom gets oh. blown up. That is going to be a double kill in the bottom lane for Seb. And this is what we're talking about. Does he you look bombers oh. so aggressive. Doesn't even burn the passive on the Zac there. Very expertly set up dive there. Rosie tank of the turret. Gets in on the Tom Kench, and they focus him down, because they know if they go on the Ezreal, he's going to just get eaten up. So the ignite is the only summoner they get, but double kills and the damage on the turret. Tiger as well, because of the passive of those two champions, get the same base, so Rosie yeah, can give himself that. was a real nice buffer, actually. Yep. Makes me happy. It reminds me when we used to play Zyrakhan, and then you abandoned me. Um, however, <laughs> as we check in what that costs, a 9 CS differential right now for Claire in the mid lane. Goes mm -hmm. back, gets his Catalyst and his tier, yep. so completely back up to par. Yep. And then you have a look at Seb. He got himself a couple of kills, however, is still equal in items, given the fact that, you know, a little bit more farm over to Sib. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that Seb did get both the kills, kind of bombers. It's a good play, but unfortunate for them that they weren't going down onto Tiger or anything like that. But, I mean, I think it's actually good. And the reason I think that is because Cinder Hulk junglers got nerfed a little bit this patch. We mm -hmm. talked about the War Mogs synergy. Yeah, okay. However, you've got a double frontline on both comps. If your frontline is stronger, you just win team fights. That's how a lot of these tank fights come down, because Poppy's going to be getting smacked. Scion as well as Seb are going to be getting smacked. And uh, if... Ezreal and Ryze, who come online pretty early mm -hmm. at the moment, to be honest, can't get through. Sleeping and Seb, they just can't win team fights. Yep. It's going to be rough. It's going to be very rough. Seb just going to clear out his camp so far. Sybil had that one dive early, has been matched by Seb in the bottom side. But you have to think with the slight gold edge the Bombers have right now, just giving away the blue buff. But the first dragon, speaking of dragons, actually, the air got buffed in this pack. So yeah. it's not completely useless. It's still pretty useless. Nah, I like it. Really? Yeah, I'm a big... I, we've talked about it's this like, so much. Movement speed is the best stat in the game. But it's like 7 to 9 move speed in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What's wrong with that? Like, sure, man. Oh, I'd rather Seb just, just red buffed his... Uh, anything else. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Stopped roughy. on one health. So yep. technically it is Lucha's fault. Uh, no, it's... No, what, no what, what do you mean you would rather anything else? I'd rather an ocean or an infernal or a mountain, but Seb might just find himself a scorpion instead. Really? Uh... Get away from that one. Yes, absolutely. Ocean Drake is better early game. I will give that to you. Yeah. But if you're 40 minutes into the game, no way am I taking an ocean over I mean, air. well, that's a that's a very specific caveat. That's a very specific line to draw. But my point was overall, it is a Mountain Drake spawning early. No Infernals. And nothing completely useless. So we will see teams prioritize that one a little bit right and now. You watch, we're going to see like Mountain, Infernal, Mountain, and no Ocean or <laughs> Air. So none. like this conversation was just Good. actually useless. Good. As uh, Sleeping and Mimic are kind of just smacking at each other. Both of them have percentage health W uh, mm -hmm. damage. Uh, one on the W, one on the Q. Uh, and you see Rosie clearing out some vision now that he's got that mm -hmm. level 6. Good defensive pinks, however. Look at the line of pinks for Legacy. One in the river, one on the back of the red. There was one in the tri brush. That is going to keep their bottom lane incredibly safe. Mm -hmm. But it's not even the bottom lane. It's all about Claire right there, because they have so much control now. After that dive, right in decoy, Ezreal Time just sitting on the turret, farming with Q as much as he can. He just wants to stack up that tier. And if Zyra Khan can't continually dive the bot lane, they're just going to walk up the river and they're going to dive the rise. He's so immobile, has the flash, but if you get onto him, he dies. So those pinks mean that it'll be a multi-phase step up, step up if bombers want to go mid. And you can see that Raid and Decoy really know something is up. Yep. They've got no vision of the jungle, but Seb right now can kind of sit here for as long as he wants because he has no camps available. Mm -hmm. He's not actually wasting time right now because yep. there is no goal for him to get. You can see he's just continually charging up that slingshot. Mm -hmm. Goes for oh, it this time. No ordered. buffer. Oh, yep. misses the Q. Good eat there from Decoy. Yep, but uh, unfortunately for the Bombers, that's really their best case scenario. Decoy was going toward the tribal show. That was the biggest distance that he would have had between him and Raid and... Just means a whole lot of nothing, but 3v2 right it, now, can I they think hold? plays like that, sometimes it's better to just burn the summoner spell if you Seb. Chew mm -hmm. the creep, flash forward, auto attack him. Try and guarantee the gank if you think Decoy's actually gone. Yep. Because then you can get something out of raid and potentially that is a turret take there. Mm -hmm. They're going round two. Can it connect? We have to note on the top side, Sybil's actually soloing out the Rift Herald. So I mean, Seb's camps have spawned, so yeah. they are getting an advantage now that he's spent so much time. Sybil does get that one for himself, so this yeah. is kind of the evolution of junglers, I feel like. On patch 8.4 towards the end, now into 8.5, they just solo out dragons, solo out Rift Heralds all over the shop. They're MMORPG players. Yep. They just run around in a game, 
and like, but they're on like the PVE server, and everyone else <laughs> is on the PVP server, uh, and they just they just do neutral camp. Yeah. Uh, very rarely do we see you know a jungler without a mid laner or without a top laner going for these huge camps on lanes anymore. It's more about getting tempo through the uh, jungle. Looking for either a window where you can gank once or look for, you know, something like the Rift Terror. Mid laners are the superheroes and junglers are the sidekicks. They just get brought along for the ride and the mid laners get all the I all actually the think the superheroes are the support. Because I, I, wa yes. I watch... Thank you, James. I watch it. for junglers. <laughs> but yep. I, if I get ganked by a support, pretty yeah. much 100% of the time mm -hmm. I die. Because I'm just like, why is the support top lane? It's just the most unexpected thing, especially yeah. top. Mid lane, it's like, okay, they run up the river, but top well, lane like, requires running out of base, like an early investment into mobies, things like that. But the most tilting thing for me is when a jungler and a support, if I jungle, show up at like my wolf camps or something. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, what the heck are they doing here? Like, go annoy someone else. I'm just trying to take wolves. And then they kill you. Yeah, then they kill me. And they bring all their friends. Yeah. But Sybil right now does have the flash. He's looking Ooh. for... Ooh. Very nice gank here. M Seb misses the rubber arms, and that's going to be a teleport coming in. Kidnap does go Ooh. through. Double TP actually now, so that's going to be Ooh, the flash. Battle dance out of Rosie. Grabs a kill. Mimic looking to just smack someone away. Misses everyone. Now potentially sleeping can continue this. Is there enough damage? No, they will just trade one for one. Yeah, all the globals come in. Rosie swapped out immediately for that TP to get into the play. So they do get the trade kill onto Sybil. But a bit of a mis-executed game from both sides. You said Seb missed the rubber hands, but Claire didn't get the root on the setup. Yep. That means Sybil had to burn his flash. They expend more resources, but overall a fairly even trade. Jungler for the mid. Absolutely, but really the big beneficiary of this is Tiger. Because yep. every single time pressure goes elsewhere, he is just stronger than the Ezreal right mm -hmm. now. And you can see getting so much damage down on this turret. Does he get gold it? is he equal, does. but he's going to get it. And Rosie, he snakes oh, the gold. He does. He wanted to be there to pressure right off. Oh, yeah, that's why he, he wanted to be there. I mean, yeah. He had no ultimate. There's no way you're pressuring he he off a show. double summoner spell Ezreal. He just actually took 375 gold. Looking at Tiger's gold, though, there's potential with that turret anyway. He gets the SM3 on base. So it's actually like Rosie. Oh, yeah, he now... doesn't scale well with an additional item on top of no, that. But you like, just need enough gold for SM3. If you start getting Rosie, depending on his build, we see a lot of uh, Rakans go for the Zeeks nowadays, which he is. Okay. If, he, if, if he's like an ardent. I reckon or things that, like that is not a Zeke. I reckon that is a uh, Righteous Glory. Okay. I reckon he's going the selfish build, and that's why he won it. He's like, uh, I will engage. I'm going to carry this game. As a uh, actually mimic a little bit boom in the top lane. Mm -hmm. So far, after that early dive, they've just been whacking away at each other as uh, best as possible, farming it up. Mimic, as you mentioned, no mana, so we'll have to back off here. But sleeping, just gonna. And you see so how you well mimic is well. trading. You feel like if sleeping wasn't gifted that kill in response, as well as a big creep wave. He would be down another, you know, 10 CS and the 400 gold from a kill. Mm -hmm. He would be, like, much further out of this game. However, now that he did get it, the lane is pretty much neutral. You can see Mimic is going for his cheeky build. A little bit of, you know, the Hungry Jacks cheeseburger fries as well as a Sunday. <laughs> but I think that is going to be a banner of yeah. command picked obviously, up. Obviously, the banner of command nerfs on this patch. Huge. Yeah. You don't get the double stacking. You can't double dip into Baron and the extra bonus siege damage from the banner. So uh, you don't get double bonuses. You only get one, which means they do still hit hard on the turrets, but they yeah. don't hit quite as hard as they did on patch 8.4. So but I think what happened, and this is what happens with a lot of items, you build it because it's OP, and then you realize, hey, this gives me permanent lane priority. I can teleport everywhere I want, and Scion is stuck trying to deal with he's, a bannered up minion. He struggles. So you're like, hey, like even though this isn't OP anymore, it's still pretty good. It still so has its place. I'll continue to buy it. And yep. plus, it has the best pi passive for Poppy in the game. Mm -hmm. Zoom through the turret. Zoom through Point the turret passive. Get the extra move speed. You have to think, Sybil, that was an expiry rip, so they get one charge onto the mid lane, but without any help from either of the side lanes. Mimic has gone bot, and the bot lane has switched up to top side, so Ooh, they want to break Seb this turret. Run into Sybil here. Up comes Talia as well. They are threatening, mm -hmm. and that just means they have to back away. This is great floating of pressure out of the bombers, and it's generating the melee. So far, Seb just going to zoom away from that one. Predator. Was used by Sybil there, but will be on cooldown for the most part now. But this turret is pretty low. Mm -hmm. Turret's 1-0 right now. Bombers have that one in the bot lane. See if the uh, Zyra Khan duo on the top side can sort of generate the same pressure they had when that turret was low. So we were having a debate mm -hmm. whether it would be Knight's Vow or whether it would be Ranju and Zomen. Now, obviously, I said Knight's Vow sucks. So I'm going to be the first person to say it. You were right. I was wrong. They mm -hmm. went Knight's Vow. There you go. Uh, I of course, we're talking about the more mugs and nerfs on the junglers. Yeah. Because uh, unless you're, I think, what did you say, level 11 or level 13? It's now two levels Ooh, extra. Actually, I feel like I can point. be forgiven this game. Okay. Because Ezreal doesn't build crit. 
So Randuin's is just about item. Yep. He could still sit on like Spectre's Cow and go yep. adaptive because the caveat to this conversation is the fact that the Warmogs, uh, now you need an extra about 250 health yep. to get to the passive point. So you can't just build Cinder Hulk. Which and is an item and or three it. levels. Yep. So uh, you need to bridge the gap there. You need a Knight's Vow, you need a Spectre's Cow or an adaptive or something like that. You need a Randuin's. But obviously Seb, with those two kills, has already finished himself up the Knight's Vow. And uh, Sybil on the other side is opting in for the Spectre's build. Yeah. So if he just went Cow, I, I, like, so generally the reason we haven't seen it all that much is because we've seen champions like Olaf Ooh, and nice Skarna so much and they just go for Righteous now mm -hmm. instead which gives them the health and then they go towards Warmogs uh, but I thought that it would be either Randuin's because we've been seeing so much Caitlyn, Tristana, Sire as I actually hold that thought that's going to be a gang coming and pulls Ooh. him back that is a Zach however can just use the kidnap to get out but takes two members oh, with him flashes, flashes as well shield. very nicely done from Rosie yeah. to shield it up and that's just a flash burn Hmm, Seb, incredibly low. He's going to be able to keep jungling because he does get that extra health back with the smite. Rosie keeps his jungler alive, just floated the pressure down. Does still have access to the TP, so you've noticed nobody has really gone bot lane. Poppy and Sion just whacking away at each other very, very slowly. Not going to do a whole lot, especially when Rosie and Luch can get down there. So Legacy trying to prioritize the other side of the map. But Poppy now has a banner, so Sion's yeah. going to have to kick a creep around a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Sion is coming up into the mid lane. Mm -hmm. We'll soon get vision of that banded up creep and know that he must go back bottom. Mm -hmm. Of course, only uh, 17 minutes into the game, every third wave gets the cannon creep. And the later you go, goes down to two and yep. down to one. And every single wave you get a cannon creep. When I think it's after 35 minutes in the game. Yeah, it's some, I think. Yeah. Something like that. But uh, Rift Herald obviously gone on the top side and Dragon was taken earlier, but it will be up in about a minute and a half. So not really any neutral objectives for either team to take right now. So we've seen the game sort of stagnate for the most part. So Gold lead, negligible. See, this is an area where people aren't used to playing against Banner. Because mm -hmm. the fact that Scion sat there and dealt with that creep actually means that Legacy have access to this mid lane turret and they will break it. If he had just killed the other five creeps around Banner, six creeps around Banner, the turret would have killed it. Mm -hmm. And he could have made that rotational play towards the mid lane. However, I mean, it's just such a frustrating thing yep. having to deal with this stupid cannon creep. Mm -hmm. And the implied pressure did net Legacy just that mid turret right there with the Rift Held proc earlier. Was already fairly low, but, but it hit the turret. Mimic walking up. <laughs> it's been alive for a long He's time. He's keeping it alive. Is this the next cannon wave that just arrived? I feel like it is. No. Okay, no, there's oh, one, one more. more. I was going to say, that's like a minute and a half. This guy's just been sitting in bot lane, whacking away the Scion, not doing a whole lot. But top side of the map right now, Seb is potentially looking for a dive with the bot lane. All of their ultis and flashes are available. Yeah, he's just looking to break the turret. Again, you can see Ezreal is coming up. It will go through two people, so won't kill they the range creep. Yep. They can tank this one up. Tiger goes away, and they call him back. So that will be the second turret of the game falling. One more time, 300 gold lead for the Bombers. Yeah, very nicely timed by the Bombers. They noticed that Legacy had uh, redeployed their AD carry, went back to base, picked up his Phage and the boots there. So they take that window of opportunity, take down the turret. Mimic once again with the banner minion. Brought a friend along. So interesting build actually coming out of loot at the moment. Oh, which is the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Not something that we've seen for a very long time. However, it did get buffed uh, with all the other mage item changes. Sybil potentially just going to solo out his next neutral objective. Had the Rift Herald earlier. Going to bring over Claire to secure this one. So Bombers are to take in the top turret. Did have the reset and the Globals coming out of Legacy here. Going to be able to pick themselves up that one if it's the Mountain. You predicted correctly. There you go, mate. No airs, no oceans. However, they have sent so many people bottom lane, and now the Bombers can just start up Baron in five seconds' time. They're going to have to race back here because it. the Bombers are just going to do it. In they go. Teleport coming in That's immediately. This is just a rush of the Baron. Can they actually get there in time? Because all of a sudden, you see that Rise is in dead. no man's land, and this should fall down. 2,800 oh, gold. Sybil? In comes Sybil. He has potentially flash. gets walled out. Has flash, as you mentioned. In? He goes oh. in, does not get it. Now the fight is on. Tiger on the back line. Mimic goes for Luge. Will look to bang someone away. Will not get them. Seb jumps out. Sleeping can just flash the wall. Everyone gets away. That is a brilliant Baron call. Bombers, they actually get the Baron. They all get out scot-free. The disengage comes out of Seb. Comes out of Rosie. The charm on the Rakan actually cancelled the Poppy ulti there. Mimic burnt his flash and the TP to try and make something happen. Legacy, they knew they needed to fight for that one. Even if the buff was gone, they needed to take it off all five members. But... The game, 20 minutes, instantly Bombers commit onto the Baron. And there is so much standing gold. Not yep. only do the Bombers have a lead right now, mid out is still up. All the inner is still available. This could be a four turret Baron and about a 6,000 gold swing. And all they gave up in response for it 
was an Infernal Drake. Mm -hmm. That is not worth 6,000 gold at this stage of the game. Absolutely not. We'll have to see if they can actually pick that one up. Of course, the Banner Minion from Mimic, going to be very easy for the Scion to deal with, if he has to, now that he has uh, some buffed up friends. Yep. He's got the Baron buff Minion, so uh, Bombers looking to take down. This is really yeah, interesting right that here. they've wasted so much time in the river. I feel like on that wave, they could have been looking to push up. Now, all of a sudden, they've given Claire, Claire a chance to answer the side wave. Uh -huh. This one, however, does have a cannon creep in it. They have so much dive potential. They have the Zac, they have the Scion, they have the Rakan. Interesting to see if they do try and split the map up here, because Legacy have a decent 1-3-1. Yep. Especially against the Baron, they will be losing small chunks across the board, but that might be a better strategy for them to hold. But Bombers might just force a completely, like, just a dive-heavy 5v5 play somewhere. Well, what you normally see with comps like Talia is she does exactly this. She goes and pushes so quickly. Mm -hmm. She'll walk the next wave in, then she just goes into Fog of War as actually Seb. suppression comes across. Seb will have to flash away, will have to use the ultimate, oh. will be blobletted. That was such a weird interaction. And they will kill Seb here, which means that they actually might staunch the Baron play. And that's time number two. Seb's found himself caught out on the top side of the jungle right there. First time in the river, he barely gets saved by Rosie. But this time, now it's a big window of opportunity lost by the Bombers. Only going to have four members on the map with their Baron. Mimic is Oom, however, so not really going to be... Oh, actually, he will be able to defend because he has uh -huh. members coming across back up. And that's a big deal. That's We're it. talking about the standing gold on the map mm -hmm. that's available for the Bombers. With that death, all they get is one turret right now. And Claire, honestly, might be able to answer that, that one topside right now. But that's a frustrating play out of Seb. There is no reason for him to be in that jungle. They can actually walk creep waves up in all three lanes. Mm -hmm. And Sybil would have to burn a flash, which he doesn't have. Or really get lucky with the Predator to be able to catch out Luch in a side lane. Mm -hmm. Really, if you Seb, your job in that situation is to protect your Zaya and Rakan. However, unfortunately falls down. That means that gold will just stagnate for now. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the uh, chance at such a huge swing play. The gold lead only sitting at 1,000 gold right now, despite the instant rush 20-minute Baron. They still do have a little bit of time. That one sixth left on this buff, but you have to feel like with the map position right now, sleeping in base, they're not going to be able to really force a whole lot. And that's what I was going to say. Now sleeping isn't on the map. He had to go for his recall, going towards a frozen heart now. So you can see, oh, Ooh, actually, nice Tiger chunk gets again. chunked out. That's Rake huge. keeps doing this. Sitting in fog, and then the Zaya, obviously, uh, without the vision, no mobility, would have to burn the Featherstorm to be able to dodge that one out. So Raid kind of uh, sneaking advantages here and there against the enemy anti carry. And as far as you know, Ezreal ult versus Featherstorm, one is much more crucial in a team yep, fight. Absolutely. Uh, you so just fling it. Baron going to expire. And uh, Bombers really got nothing from it. They got 1,000 gold pretty much, uh, which means that, arguably, Infernal Drake, more worthwhile. Yeah, now it is. Now it is. The second mountain coming up in about a minute and 45 seconds. The Legacy did a very nice job at holding that Baron buff there. The inner ring of turrets still available for them so far, and uh, this is the point of the game where we really look to see what Legacy can do, because this is the point where they have struggled the most. Mid-game, approaching into late-game, is where a lot of their faults do lie. The laning phase looked okay. They fell behind early to that dive of Bombers, but They've kept within it, kept within about 1,000 gold lead for the most part. And I feel like this is one of those games that so much is riding on Claire. Claire needs to be able to teamfight on this rise or genuinely needs to be able to take over in a 1-3-1 for them to be able to get all that much done. You can see that both Sybil and Mimic, they're going to be huge tanky guys. They've both got adaptive helms, you know, banner of command as they Sybil's actually looking. go for it. Over the wall goes Seb, does not get caught <laughs> out this time. He's playing with fire here. He's floating around constantly, Sybil. Doesn't have access to the flash just yet, but coming up in the next few seconds. Top laners right now just uh, proxy Smoking. farming each other. Yeah, Ooh. actually, this is going to be a time change. Claire's coming. Down, and Claire's coming as well. They can burn both of these if they Ooh. would like. Still flash, just not off cooldown yet. Claire's basing. Claire actually bases. Yep. This could be enough to kill him, however. Sleeping is tanky, but he's just going to repetitively get CC'd up. Mm -hmm. And you can see he's just going nowhere. Yeah, he's going to die eventually, but Meanwhile, Claire wanted to defend lane, the top side. That's actually going to be a kidnap onto Sybil. Battle Dance plus ultimate is available for Rosie. Nails him with it. And actually, Sleeping lived. Somehow. They, they just walked, walked away. away. He burnt his flash. Of course, Tom Kent still has his available. Tiger falls very low to raid once Ooh, again. Feather has Storm. to use a Feather Storm. It was facing the wrong way, but he's just using it to get out of dodge. But that's all we were saying. Claire was going bot side, and they could have picked up Mimic. They knew the 3v1. They would have taken him down 100%, but Claire's like, no, I need to defend the top side. But they do defend the turret. They lose the kill. So overall, maybe the right decision out of this. Legacy are going to pick up this turret on the back of the banner minion. But 
They do get caught out top side once again. Raid, very low mana, does Toy get eaten. Wall oh. comes out. Decoy oh. actually picks him up on the wrong side of the wall and now will be punished. You can see Seb looking for Raid as well. Decoy falls down. That should be <laughs> another dragon. Meek's a genius. Sleep, sleeping was like zooming up the river. There was no vision. They didn't know where Poppy went and he thought he was catching Mimic out in the river. But he just ducked into the dragon pit. The steam train comes flying fast. Not stopping all stations, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes, that's the express train straight to the mid lane. <laughs> and Mimic gets off and does the do do and runs back down to bot lane to safety. So both top laners have got the uh, miraculous escape so far. One to one. But I think we're seeing how difficult it is for Legacy to win team fights. Yep. Uh, because they, they just playing against brick walls in multiple roles and the engage that comes out of Rosie, who did go Zeke, so you're correct, uh -huh. uh, is just so much easier to land. Simple can isolate one person, they've got a very good pick comp, Yep. Uh, but as far as a 5v5 go, Ezreal plus Rise is so much harder to execute upon. Luch going for the old school Rabadon's build. Yeah. That's a, that's a weird one. Doesn't build into anything. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, building the Rabbitons, like that's a bit odd. But no, it actually that's that's just not the build path anymore. <laughs> that's uh that's a roughy. Their decoy might find himself caught out again, but no, they're looking for Seb. Yeah, this time they'll oh. look for it. They go into decoy looking for the kidnap over the wall, teleport coming in. Sion is frontlining, but none of the blocked. damage is just there, and they are blocked. Rosie into the wall by Mimic. Such a nice tackle. Goes in, oh, still engaged. gets everyone, however, but Luch just can't pump out the damage. You can see Mimic on the back line, keeping everyone busy. Double kill already for Claire. Good ultimate out of Mimic and Tiger. Cast to continue to run away. Feather Storm, triple kill for Claire. That's a three-man route. And only the two carries left up and available. And the Baron just spawned as well. They're still chasing on Decoy. Flash, bit Sybil forward. Yeah, actually, Luch goes down as well. Make that a quadra for Claire. This Ooh. just might be the Penta. It will be. It's a triple oh, and a delayed. double. I'm calling a Penta kill right there for Claire. Gone from 1-0-1. One, one. Got himself six right now. We just mentioned the Baron did just spawn. It came up and available. So they get the pick onto Seb once again. And now the ball is in Legacy's court. The gold lead explodes to about 3-4,000 here with the Baron. They've still got... A lot of turrets still available. There is a fair amount of standing gold, but can they just pull the trigger on the play? This is what I was saying pre-game. We want Legacy now that they have this Baron, and that's been the crux of a lot of their problems. Actually, we'll take a look at the fight once again. Seb actually goes on to decoy. You need to take close attention to Tiger and Luch in this game. In this fight, they're doing absolutely no damage. Tiger's thinning out the wave, and Luch hasn't even arrived. It's just too little, too late from Bombers. Rosie gets a nice engage, but the damage just isn't there. Tiger can't make his way into the fight. Mimic is 1v2ing and actually winning on the backside. So Legacy just wiped the floor with the Bombers. Yeah, absolutely. And the big thing here was just the fact that the damage dealers from Legacy are so short range, but were able to free hit. Yep. Because there was no damage threat there to zone them away. They were just running forward. And you see Claire, both summoner spells used offensively here. He That's it. a huge play. Yep, gets himself the pentakill right now. So he's a uh, very big rise. Finished he's his huge. fourth item. He just went back, bought his decap, bought his void stuff. He's chilling. And Luch, uh, he couldn't finish his decap. He's just got scepters everywhere. Yeah. He is a scepter collector. He is. Like, he's got it, three, four, it, five. If, if it is a rod, he holds it. <laughs> he's got boots and lots of stars. <laughs> he's a wizard, Harry. As we uh, <laughs> actually push in, double banner of command picked up. Yeah. Uh, this actually just could be the game-winning push right now from Legacy. Luch is still on the top side as well. Did just get his base off, but there is about half of a wave here available. Mimic going to channel that one. Throw Banked away, away the, tank. the tank. And see whether he goes in now. Does get rooted up. That was lucky from Tiger because he was in wallbang room as well. See Ray just hitting this inhibitor right now. Mid lane turret being pushed in. Top lane will reverse eventually. And uh, now Mimic goes across and just applies that Baron buff, but in comes Bannon. Can he do work? I think he will, especially Raid. Throwing out Qs instead of auto attacking the inhib there, but it will go down eventually. Legacy picked that one up. Probably going to float over towards the mid lane. The wave has been held, so potentially they can stack up a few or they just shove it in. Flick onto Decoy, gets a little bit of damage, but Seb might be looking no. Cancels. And they need to pull the trigger they at do. some point because they're just being starved out right now. The game will not get easier after this shot. You feel like it's do or die for the Bombers, and this is an area they have struggled. Turret, oh, actually, engaged. Rosie goes in onto Claire, oh. and they stop it with the Poppy. However, sleeping, that's going to... No, he didn't channel it long enough. Gets knocked into the wall, and will have to flash out. Raid goes on the wall, looking for it, burns his flash in response. And now with the tank dead, Legacy will look to just storm the base. Bombers 4v5, all they have is the Zac. If they do want to pull the trigger on the engage, Rosie burnt his, but... Looks like they're just going to bleed this one. Second inhib going over to Legacy right now. Their Baron has just been so much more successful. 
than their counterparts. And this is what we measured the Bombers on last week. They got the Baron against the Chiefs. They picked up one turret and then got picked off in yep. the jungle. Chiefs got one Baron, won the game. Yep. Legacy, exact same position. They were down 2,000 gold. They get a Baron. They're now up 8,000 gold. That's huge. And they are looking unstoppable in this game. Only one more in here to take. See how they do deploy for this one. But Claire, Ray, just getting so big. Both completed four items right now. Luch finally completes his death cap. Bases with enough gold to actually pick that one up and pick himself up a nice big wave. It's kind of cool that you can turn two staves into a hat. I like. I would like <laughs> to live into a world where you're like, ha, huh, what to wear today? Well, I could rock my double staffs. Or for I an extra on my head. thousand gold, I could just turn it into a hat. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Dragon. <laughs> Spawning in about 40 seconds, but you have to think the inhib top side is just so much more important for Legacy, so they're going to deploy. Dragon Nexus. Yeah. Dragon Nexus. It's always a tough question that I have to ask myself. How much gold is Dragon worth? Is it worth any to the killer? I think it's like 25. Actually. I think it's nothing. So the it? Nexus is double value because that's worth 50. I'm going to call it. <laughs> I'm going to call it. Legacy going to get this one up for free. Obviously, the Baron is not available anymore. That has timed out, but they have Sleeping two procs of the banner. The bottom lane. He's oh, actually sleeping. teleporting very far behind. Play. Here That's we Poppy go. W. Poppy actually uses W already. In Seb's goes in. Seb. Gets tackled away. We'll bring everyone back, and we'll just get blown up before the fight really happens. However, now Raid's so low. Claire is godlike, however, and absolutely ripping people apart. They're just stacking up for him, and this could be the second one of the game. Claire going nuts. That's the Can triple he get kill. The Ultimate into the back line. He has he has flash. Go oh. forward. This is gonna be the quadra kill. Give him the penta this time, Rosie. Turn around. Come back, please. Oh, please, says Claire. I just want Are my official dive? penta. No. <laughs> no, they do not dive. A second quadra kill picked up for Claire, and Legacy will just close out this game. Oh, the gold lead team fight there coming out. They're actually gonna dive the Nexus. This Here we is go. the double penta. Rosie. In he goes. Does he get it? Yes. He gets it. Penta <laughs> kill picked up for Claire. Oh man, I've never seen that. You barely see one Penta. It was unofficial, but the second one, absolutely undisputed. That's two in one game. And this is exciting. This is what fans have been waiting for. Claire, in the last two weeks, has very much started to accelerate it. He is an MVP candidate at the moment. He, I would up. argue that he is the most valuable player mm -hmm. as per a team goes. If Claire fires, Legacy look like a monster. 100%. We mentioned earlier into the game how they just look so successful when they kind of push all their resources into the mid lane. And that's what we saw for the most part as well. And then obviously, comes out Trumps once again. Bombers had the advantage early game. Their bot lane was looking pretty good. They got themselves the Baron. But great. from that point, they just they just didn't get enough of an advantage. And then they threw. I mean, looking at the turret dive, the execution that went towards that, like the ability to go the first time, clear out the vision, mm -hmm. push the mid wave again, once again, escort Luch down to the bottom lane. Pick up a double kill immediately. Yep. Get your jungler ahead. Get your bottom lane first turret. But from there, their mid-game proactivity just yep. really slows down. And it's those little picks. And that's kind of what separates like a, a top-tier team from one of the ones at the bottom of the ladder, where they're in the, pretty much the same situation. They both get the Baron, but Legacy get an 8,000 gold lead, and Bombers just get one. And I mean, you have a look at these comps being played in the LCK. And like when you have a Scion, as well as a Zac. You have every right to actually just say, stuff our sidelines, we're not 1-3-1-ing. Three, one just throw three ultimates at the mid lane turret, and if they stick around, we'll fight them because Scion doesn't care about turrets at that stage mm -hmm. of the game. And if they leave, then we just take mid lane inhibitor, then we worry about our side mm -hmm. lanes afterwards. But they were being finicky. It's when you give opportunities to teams like Legacy and mm -hmm. they can just grab you out of nowhere, uh, and they never let them go. Yeah, 100%. Uh, kind of on the back of Seb there. Got caught out a few too many times. I feel like he's going to have a rough turnaround into game two. He's really going to need to step it up if they're uh, to actually have a chance in this yep. series right now. Legacy 1-0 looking real good. And especially given the fact that he was on the Zac, He had mm -hmm. the tools to make these plays happen. However, too many solo adventures on a tank yeah. really cost him. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a... I, I know! You're the king of solo adventures I know, adventures yeah, like solo tanks. warding into the jungle. That's an absolute disaster. That's what he found himself doing time and time again. And he, was, uh, he was actually, yeah. I wonder what could be in this brush. Hey, there's a bigger fog of war here. There's it's no another champion. death. Let, oh. Let's check that one out as well. Uh, but to break down that game further, let's throw it over to Laura Choose. Thank you very much, guys. Legacy able to pick up game number one in that series there. It was a bit closer than uh, I think a lot of people would have anticipated. And it really looked like the Bombers had it in that yeah, early game. Yeah, I was buckling in for a 50-minute game by the way that game was going. But uh, I, I um, don't want to discredit Legacy, but I feel like Bombers were in control of that game the entire time. I think the one poor play 
Uh, well, I'll start off with the good play that Bombers did. So Bombers essentially made all the good decisions and all the bad decisions this game, and then eventually it ultimately costed them the game. But I will highlight that their Baron call um, was very smart. I'm um, noticing that they had like, one dra um, they had one mountain dragon and saw that Poppy was bot side. Um, I thought that threw them into a good position. But then Seb was kind of the night and day of uh, of bombers today. He uh, he performed well. A nice double kill on the bot side. But then again, he got called out as soon as they secured Baron, and then that ascent that Baron power play was essentially wasted. Well, we do have to give the bombers some praise. Uh, I, I feel like at the beginning of the split, you know, we were saying that the bombers weren't a very proactive team, but here they were trying to make plays and. Uh, Choo choos, you were you were happy with how they took Baron, at least in, in yeah, this play. Yeah, so twenty minutes like bang on, twenty minutes it spawns, they jump in, they take it. Uh you can see a nice wall from Talia forces um forces like a bit of dis uh, disjoint from Legacy, but like the way they pull out of this fight, sleeping has his flash, just immediately gets out, everyone just evacuates the Baron pit. They don't want to take this fight, they got what they came for, is uh is very good. It's it's something that I'll uh, in O oh, specifically People like find it hard to pull out of fights because uh, I mean they won the Baron. They've used a lot of their abilities, a lot of their of their mana and resources into getting this thing. But if they probably took a fight, they probably would have lost. Um, but then again, uh, Seb getting caught out and then engaging at the end and giving over a pentakill to Rise is what co what, co what eventually cost them. Just about to touch on that, the bombers do make bad decisions too, as you said, which did lead to Claire getting that unofficial pentakill. Here it is on replay. Yeah, so the Tali is farming top side, getting top priority. You can see he's done a good job, and Zach just happens to just go for it. Um, maybe a bit of miscommunication. Tiger's also getting zones out from the side, and you can see this fight is over before it roll, like, really starts with bombers. Um, Zach's down. Uh, Mimic does a great job zoning, zoning two members of Legacy, and you can see Claire just does his job. Just pull, like, TP's in eventually chases down these other two members, and that swings the gold by a huge amount that eventually uh, just, I, I did like their, uh, their draft this game from um, from Legacy, because they did scale, they did have a nice one three one comp, um, but this rise just took over the game at this point. But there are a lot of positives coming out of this game for the Bombers. There is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel for them. For what sure. do you think they need to uh, change or adapt going into game number two? Yeah, so I don't think the champions in particular are like the reason why they lost that game. I think their draft was fine, but I do think um, they need to be a bit more patient and slower in their decision making, specifically Seb. Um, but I think things like the Talia pick, uh, I feel like Luch, I think Luch is like a very uh, selfish player. Like, I know that he likes to impact the bigger map every now and again, but, like, when he's on the rise or something that can just build up his own advantage, that's where he shines. Something like the Talia is is just going to lose to the rise eventually. And you could see he just didn't really rotate or utilize that wall too well. Um, so they're on blue side this game. So I think a better draft will come out of Windows Monkey. But uh, I will go back and say that their decisions this game were both good and poor. Um, but they have a lot of good things to take out, and I think they can still win this series. Before we do get into game number two, though, I want to talk to you about Swain, because even though we haven't seen him in the OPL, he did uh, undergo a major rework recently. What were your initial opinions or thoughts on his rework? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Swain... It, uh, well, before the rework, I did like Swain. I couldn't really play him because I'm just not good at that. But uh, uh, I, I thought, like, the rework was really was really something unique. Um, they changed his quit not too much, but they made uh, all of his spell. They turned him in kind of like a bruiser top mage uh, carry. So like he would slowly just bully out enemy top uh, enemy top tanks and then just come to a team fight and be this AP damage dealer. But the 8.5 rework, which is what really has propelled him forward, he's getting, he's getting first picked quite a lot because um, he's a flex pick now. People put him mid lane, but I kind of disagree and agree with this because uh, I agree with I agree with it because actually I'll start with why I disagree with it. <laughs> I disagree with Swain being mid because his range is too short. Um, if he, he if he misses his E, that did get buffed on 8.5. The width did get buffed, so it's easier to hit. But if he does miss that, he loses all trading potential. His Q is too short, and just in a lane which is all about uh, range and a a AP damage, uh, he just will get he'll just get poked out. Um, but then again, I think he's an incredible 2v2 with his jungler. So if you do want to force a fight in the mid lane with your with a strong jungler like Skarn or Sejuani, then uh, I think he I think he's very good in that in that sense. We did see him in the mid lane at NA Academy uh, this morning, actually. But do you think we're going to see any Swain mid or top in the OPL? I don't 
think so. Really? I don't. Th- I don't think anyone's jumped onto it. I saw it being like I saw it being first picked this morning, in and I was just shocked. I was like, "Wow, is he actually this good?" And uh, I, I haven't seen anyone pick him up in OCE yet. But uh, who knows? Bomb and <laughs> Luch might pull it out. Uh, I would probably think Shock would pull it out because Shock's that like you know that he has that uh, style of picking up those niche picks. But um, they don't play till tomorrow. Well, I'm hoping that someone does pick up Swain. But remember, guys, if you have any questions for Choo Choo's, make sure you send them over to us on Facebook or Twitter, and he will answer them today. And you will win yourself a mystery skin. Maybe you'll get a Swain skin. Free skin. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds pretty skin. good. A Swain skin. Nice alliteration. We're going to head to a break, but when we get back, we're going to have game number two between Legacy and the Bombers. Kidnap onto Sybil, Battle Dance Plus Ultimate is available for Rosie. Nails him with it, and actually sleeping lived. They're looking for the Kidnap over the wall, Teleport coming in. Sion is frontlining, but none of the damage is just there, and they are blocked. Rosie into the wall by Mimic, such a nice tackle. Goes in, still gets everyone, however, but Luch just can't pop out the damage. You can see Mimic on the back line, keeping everyone busy. Double kill already for Claire. Good ultimate out of Mimic and Tiger. Cast to continue to run away. Feather Storm, triple kill for Claire. That's a three man route. But yeah, actually, Luch goes down as well. Make that a quadra for Claire. This Ooh. just might be the Penta. It will be. It's a triple oh, and a delayed. double. I'm calling a Penta kill right there for Claire. Now, Raid so low. Claire is godlike, however, and absolutely ripping people apart. They're just stacking up for him, and this could be the second one of the game. Claire going nuts. That's the Can triple kill. The Ultimate into the back line. He has, he has flash. Go oh. forward. This is going to be the quadra kill. Give him the penta this time, Rosie. Turn around. Come back. The gold lead team fight there coming out. They're actually going to dive the Nexus. Here this we is go. the double penta. Rosie. In he goes. Does he get it? Yes. He gets it. Penta <laughs> kill picked up the Claire. We are, all of us, born into a lie that there are those who are good and those who are evil. But these words mean nothing. In truth, the only measure of a soul is the strength of their will. Welcome to the Swain Champion Spotlight. Swain's passive, Ravenous Flock, has two components. First, enemy champions leave behind soul fragments when they die. Shadowy Ravens scavenge nearby soul fragments, healing Swain. He can also store a bunch of soul fragments, and we'll go over what that means a little bit later. Now let's talk about Ravenous Flock's second effect. Right-clicking any nearby immobilized enemy champion damages them, drags them towards Swain, and rips out a soul fragment. The drag has a moderate cooldown, so you'll have to choose the best victim when following up on area of effect lockdowns. Swain's Q, Death's Hand, unleashes several bolts of Eldritch power in front of him, each damaging the first target struck. Multiple hits on the same target deal reduced damage beyond the first. Bolts pierce through targets they kill, restoring a portion of Swain's mana and hitting the next unit in their path. Take advantage of this in lane to shock your opponent through their low health minions or refresh your mana pool wave clearing. Swain's W, Vision of Empire, opens a demonic eye at a target location, damaging and slowing all enemies in the area after a moderate delay. Champions hit by Vision of Empire take extra damage, grant Swain a soul fragment, and are temporarily revealed. Vision of Empire's range is freaking massive. It gives tons of versatility as a zoning, Reconnaissance, and follow-up tool. It's up to you as a master tactician to figure out the best way to use it. It's typically not wave clear. Swain's E, Never Move, projects his demonic hand forward, then calls it back, damaging everything it touches. Never Move passes through enemies on the way out, but explodes if it hits something as it's returning. Targets caught in the explosion are rooted in addition to damage. Never move explodes if it hits any enemy on the way back, not just enemy champions. Keep an eye on what's behind your target, or you could end up rooting a minion or monster by mistake. Feels bad, bird dad. Watch for opportunities to follow up on never move with your other abilities. Pull your opponent in with Ravenous Flock's right click, then drop a five finger death's hand for tons of damage. Once you've got a grasp on Swain's kit, eyeball an opportunity to add Vision of Empire into the mix. Swain's ultimate, Demonic Ascension, invokes his full power, granting a big chunk of health on cast and draining life from the nearest enemies for an extended duration, prioritizing champions. 
When Demonic Ascension ends, either by running down the duration or by reactivating after draining enough health, Swain casts Demon Flare, the payoff for collecting all those soul fragments. Swain crushes every fragment in his possession to unleash a Nova of Demonic Energy, damaging the closest enemies around him. The Nova's damage increases for each fragment consumed. Demon Flare is Swain's make or break moment in teamfights. Flash bombing the opposing backline is a play for the highlight reels when Swain does quick maths. But if you don't know 2 plus 2 is 4, miscalculations will leave him stranded in the middle of a very angry enemy team with no access to his survival tools. Let's sum it up with a late game team fight to strike fear under the foes of Noxus. Swain catches Ezreal and Braum with a well aimed never move, then pulls Ez in with a ravenous flock. Ezreal tries to flash to safety but is winged by the far edge of Demon Flare. A few more pecks murder Braum, bringing the team fight to a tidy conclusion. Thanks for watching the Swain Champion Spotlight. Click these links for more intel on the Noxian Grand General.